I'd like to call this meeting to order. Today is Tuesday, September 24th, 2019. This is a Prescott City Council study session. Welcome everybody this afternoon. Uh, we have a couple really good items today on the agenda. Let's call roll please. Mayor Mangarelli. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Orr. Not here yet. Councilman Blair. Present. Councilman Good. Here. Councilman Lamerson. Here. Councilwoman Scholl. Here. Councilman Sishka is not present yet. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, so let's start with item 3A, please. Discussion on the Whiskey Row Alley revitalization. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. I'm Tyler Goodman, Assistant to the City Manager, and I'm happy to give you an update on some of the ideas that we have for the Whiskey Row Alley. As you can see here, and I'll jump into this topic later in the presentation, but this is uh, 239 West Gurley Street. This is the north side of the alley. And that's an artistic rendering of what the proposed mural would look like on that wall right there. I'm going to touch on a few topics today. The first would be the beautification of the alley with a focus on health and safety and the overall appeal and look. Lighting, signage, artwork, including that mural. And then the question of special events, as well as the results of what we've had from meeting with uh, Whiskey Row merchants, business owners, and building owners. First, uh, we would really like to improve just the overall look and feel. So with that comes the beautification. There's, there's some uh, landscaping around the parking garage that we'd like to improve, and that's pretty simple, pretty quick. But also consolidating the dumpsters. As you can see in this picture, at least from the Google Streets view, there are three recycling bins. Well, those have been consolidated uh, to one recycling bin in the middle, and then there are two trash compactors on either side. That creates more space in the alley, helps clean it up, and... Um, and make it look a little bit better. We also would like to clean up the grease on, um, on the surface there. And we've, our public works department has spoken with several of the businesses back there talking about maybe best management of, of grease from the business to the, the container that we have, which is behind one of the bins just to the left outside the frame of the picture. Uh, the idea would be to get the grease up and off uh, which goes throughout the alley and then even down into the parking garage. So just lifting that. And then, of course, any trash or junk or debris, getting it cleaned up. And lighting. Now, now these are just artistic renderings, so these wouldn't necessarily be the final product, but it could give you an idea of what we're thinking about. So to include lighting, you'd see maybe on the trees near the parking garage, some string lights through those. And we've also discussed uh, string lights throughout the alley. Uh, throughout most of it, stopping just shy of the Hotel St. Michael, so as not to impose on the fire escape structure on the side of the building there and maybe not tempt anybody to use it um, for bad purposes, we could put it that way. Um, we've talked about the height of the string lights, and I should mention that uh, these plants have been, we've been talking with staff and members of the public, uh, PDP and others, uh, since about May. We've been thinking about this, talking about it, We've had all of our major departments involved, public works, police, fire. We've gotten everybody's opinion and feedback on what would work best if we are to move forward with implementing these ideas. So for the string lights, for example, they would be 25 feet high. That way, uh, the delivery trucks, the trash trucks could come in and empty those containers without hitting the lights, having any problems that way. Uh, they would be uh, ideally mounted to freestanding poles that would go diagonally through the alleyway. They would have a source of power, obviously. And uh, on top would be a luminary, so they'd be lights as well, security lights. And those could actually be dimmed from what Public Works is telling me, which would be really neat to create an ambiance or, or whatever you want back there. You could have them high for security uh, or low for other, you know, things going on. Um, and so string lights is definitely part of that. And as well as creating a space that is well lit and safe and inviting for people who are using the parking garage. We've spoken with the City Council about wanting to improve the usage of the garage, and I'll touch on that as well in a little bit, but having an inviting place to leave the garage. Uh, ideally, it would invite them to the alley. They could uh, go to the different businesses, restaurants, and other places, and then go on to the downtown from there, and it'd be a really nice inviting space. 
And talking about signage, again, these are just renderings or ideas. Um, we've talked about having archway signs at either end, the north and south entrance of the alley, that would indicate what it is, the Whiskey Row Alley. Uh, don't pay too much attention to the other details, such as the, the plants, the planters, things like that. Those, those are just the artist's ideas. But we're really talking about uh, the signage here. And I can show you, here is just a, a really generic sketch of what it could look like. I mean, the font, everything is customizable. Uh, so it could be the font, the size. It could be 3D, as you could see here. It's kind of uh, mounted in a 3D look. Um, but that is, that is an idea for the archway sign. We've talked about neon signs, um, a cowboy boot at either end of the alley, which would be lit up at night. It would not flash, but it would be lit up and it would be an inviting thing so people could say, oh, what's over there? Um, and be led to the Whiskey Row Alley. And of course, the mural, uh, the Welcome to Prescott mural project. And this project is currently ongoing. It's funded purely by donations. Um, and from supporters from around the community, businesses, and individuals. The artists are Julie Hutchins and Dana Cohn. They're both locals. I know Julie uh, will both have spent most of their lives in Prescott, and Julie, um, I think, was born here. If not, she was raised here and has lived here most of her life. And so they have a good feel for our Western heritage, uh, what Prescott is, and, um, and have received a lot of feedback. This has gone through the Art and Public Places Committee and has received support, as well as through the Historic Preservation Commission. From going through those, the idea was that we don't want to paint on the original historic Prescott brick on that building, the 239 West Gurley. Um, and so the idea was to paint on aluminum composite material and then mount that to the brick wall so that it would not have to be painted onto the brick wall. And if you can't tell, those aren't real bricks. Uh, this is an update as of about seven or eight days ago. We went and got some pictures of what the artists are working on. And uh, they have painted bricks onto that aluminum canvas. And then uh, they're in the process of aging the bricks here. You can see the difference between the aged bricks and the non-aged bricks. And then they are going through and painting. Each letter represents a factor of our community. So P for plaza, rodeo, entertainment, seasons, community, outdoors, trails, and true west. And uh, there are, you'll, you'll notice some people you might recognize in the mural. Uh, because these are funded through donations, there are different sponsorship levels. One of those, you can actually have your image uh, in the mural. And so you might recognize some, some local folks who've donated and have their image, uh, their family or their business in the mural, which is pretty cool. The artists estimate to complete this project by the end of October or early November, and then we can have it up. Now, uh, going through the Art and Public Places Committee, uh, this, again, is not, it's not a city building, uh, and it's not a city-funded project. So... Uh, what we are really doing is saying we will take ownership of it for future maintenance, which really doesn't include much at all. The artists don't expect any maintenance except if it does get maybe some graffiti, which would be unfortunate, um, or cleaning it up now and then, but nothing of real significant cost going forward. It's just someone to take care of it. And the good thing is we have an, an agreement with the building owner already uh, for 10 years. And so if the 10 years is up and the building owner doesn't want it any longer, we'll take control of it and maybe we can put it up somewhere else. Uh, if people are interested in donating, it's through our city website. And go to the city of Prescott's website and just search uh, Whiskey Row Alley. And there you can see a link on how to donate and all the details of that. I mentioned the parking garage before. Um, Kind of as a tangent to this project, we've talked about improving signage on Granite Street itself, as well as leading up to the parking garage and the, um, the sign on the parking garage. So it's a public parking instead of uh, Granite Garage or whatever, whatever it says now that doesn't make any sense. Um, we also talked a few months ago about having that QR code, and that's the scannable code with your smartphone that we will, we will be placing on the parking signs downtown. So as people are walking around, Maybe their time's up. They have to get in their car. Well, they can see the QR code that says free parking. They'll scan it. It'll pull up the page of our city garage and lead them probably just a couple blocks away so they can get free parking and continue to shop and eat and spend time downtown. And we've also enhanced uh, the search engine results so that when you Google, for example, parking in Prescott, our page comes up first so that people can see it very quickly. Uh, we've talked about within the garage itself improving lighting and the security cameras as well as cleaning it up as well as a part of this so that it can be inviting 
and kind of tie in with that whole area that we're talking about. I want to bring up special events. This was something, as we went to the merchants, we held a public meeting. Uh, we, we mailed a letter to, to the buildings and to the business owners, um, everybody that we could. We searched addresses and tried to send them. And if we missed somebody, we apologize. We, we tried to get the word out that we held a public meeting. This was a few weeks ago. Um, as well as having personal visits with the business owners. And um, the reaction really was overwhelmingly positive for the enhancement side of things, the lights, the art, cleaning it up. But there was a lot of concern about special events. How would that be feasible with all of the different schedules, all the different deliveries and patrons and uh, things going on? For example, the Holiday Courtyard could book events a year and a half in advance. So how do you coordinate all those things? Um, from a staff's point of view, uh, with these enhancements, we weren't actively looking to promote new or more special events in that space. We thought because it's cleaner, because it's more inviting, there might be a, a market for someone to come in and say, hey, I want to host a special event back here, uh, which you know, that, that is feasible and reasonable to think. It would then, of course, have to go through the special events committee and process, which would include the vetting of fire lanes, uh, size, egress, ingress, um, if you have a special event liquor license, uh, all those types of things, you'd also have to get at least 75% of business owners to sign off. And so it would have to go through a pretty lengthy process and a thorough process. But from the feedback we've received, uh, staff's recommendation at this time is to hold off on doing any special events, um, at least until we can get the improvements, uh, let, let's see how things are working. Um, there's really no simple solution to coordinating with all the different schedules and businesses and things going on. So that would be our recommendation for now. Um, and that is really, those were really the results of our, of our meetings with the merchants on Whiskey Row. Now talking about costs, uh, the cleanup efforts, that would be done as part of the normal public works budget, the street maintenance. Um, the neon signs, we just got these in today. Uh, so that would be for two signs, it would be just over $22,000. The archway signs are estimated between 36,000 and 50,000 for the two archway signs. Uh, the light poles and string lights are just under 25,000. Safety ballers, if, if we were to go that route, that would really be for special events. If we're not really going for special events, that cost could be um, eliminated or moved to another item, perhaps, uh, that the council would want to see. And then, of course, the mural is about 6,400, and we've received donations. Right now, we're at about 5,000. Um, and so we're pretty close, but uh, obviously if, if we get more than the 6,400, we're going to be doing some more artwork, maybe on our parking garage, um, and, and things to, to liven it up, some whiskey barrels or something very, very whiskey row-esque. So uh, it'll be going to that. Um, and that, those are the costs. So with that, knowing that um, this is not a, a budgeted project, um, we would recommend considering the phasing of these costs, depending on what the council wants to see, if any of it, um, and maybe doing some of it this year, some of it in the next fiscal year, and really just getting your feedback on that. And with that, and there's some more pictures of the mural, but I'm happy to have any questions that, that you might have. Okay, thank you, Tyler. Appreciate the presentation. Uh, I failed to mention we will do public comment here, so if you'd like to uh, do that. There are cards back there that you can fill out and bring up to the city clerk for public comment. Questions, comments from the council? Mayor Pro Tem? Well, I think this is very exciting. And Tyler, I appreciate all that you've done and all that our committees have done to, to work on this to get us to this point. Um, it will be a wonderful addition to our city. Very excited about the mural. And, uh, and everyone's input on it. So I've, I've talked to a lot of folks, I will tell you, I, I'm just getting a lot of great positive comments about it. I do like the idea of phasing in, but I would like to talk, so some of the monies that we would spend on this would come out of, most likely I would assume, bed tax because of, um, it's for tourist, tourism, right? Mm -hmm. It's a lot of it, so, yeah, so would that be possible? We've talked about, the neon signs, for example, the 22,000 coming from bed tax. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that would um, be a discussion of the TAC board mm -hmm. as well. 
So that would go through them for discussion. It's just going to feel so much brighter back there and cleaner. And, and it's quite wide when you go back and be in that alley. It's, it's amazing how big it is, what a great space it actually is. So I think a lot of positive things. I just want to thank everybody that's worked on it. I know we have several in, in the audience today, so and thank you. And, and Michael Lamar, I think you brought us this idea. <laughs> so should we blame you, Michael? Yes, blame me. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, I think the alley is not the most inviting space in the world right now. It's not. And because of that, I think the parking garage gets underutilized. And at the core, this is about making it more pedestrian friendly for that area and also I, I had a brief conversation with the tourism director for the state we can market this as a new amenity and a new exciting addition to prescott with really somewhat minimal cost but it's really stuff that's already here that just needs to be shined up that's kind of the concept and mayor if i could just add prescott downtown partnership was a huge part of this too as well and uh really appreciate that. There are a lot of businesses that today already back up to the alley that could really take advantage of this, so are on the corners. So it's, it's, it's a very good spot, so thank you. Councilman Lamerson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll echo some of Billy's comments with regards to thank you to the PDP and um, <clears throat> you, Tyler, and all those folks that are involved. As a downtown merchant, a long time downtown merchant, 40 years downtown. <laughs> I'm, I'm really happy to see some efforts and money going in to revitalize downtown. And this can be a precursor for things to be uh, thought about with some of the other alleyways that are not very inviting in downtown. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Blair. Um, not being a great proponent of murals, <clears throat> for one, I think it's glorified graffiti. However, uh, I have great concern about how that alley is used. As a purveyor, uh, bread truck driver, a delivery guy for 40 years, where are we going to put the semis, the trucks, the access points driving through the alley with a vehicle or a poor at best, uh, with pedestrian walking on the sidewalk? I'd hate to see the fact of somebody saying the alley is more important to put people in and then we put the trucks in the middle of Montezuma Street mm -hmm. where we already have traffic issues. So I think we need to walk very carefully about what we're trying to achieve. Michael, I think the idea is great. Cleaning it up is a wonderful idea. Um, I don't know that we have a mural policy in the city of Prescott. I thought we once did that the council would bet that policy before. Uh, it was automatically assumed that everybody was going to love it. Um, frankly, I guess the proof's in the pudding. Uh, I understand it's not going to be on the wall, but it's going to be taped to the wall somehow. It'll be mounted to to wooden brackets that are on the wall. So instead of painting on the mural or on, on the brick wall itself, which would ruin it forever, it'll be painted onto that canvas, which will then be mounted to some wood framing. But the historical group is okay with drilled holes in that red brick? The, the, the idea was to do it in the mortar. Well, the mortar is too soft. Uh, and so it, our, the, the sign company that we're using has specialized equipment, screws, and other tools that really mitigate the impact to the brick. Okay. And it's, it's very easy to make it look like it was never there once it is gone in 10 or more years. I can say it's a great idea. I just hope when we get to the point that somebody looks at maintenance of the lights, they've got to be maintained, all those things have got to be done. It's going to be an ongoing expense It must be probably put in as a line item in the bed tax from year to year so it's not coming back through the general fund. Overall, I think it's a great idea. Maybe we'll have less people getting beat up behind the palace on their way to uh, the parking garage. Um, but uh, I'm going to keep my other comments to myself. I hope it works. I think eliminating uh, receptacles back there and eliminating trash compactors and trying to keep the grease that comes out of the restaurants to a minimum are big challenges because that's what alleys generally are used for. Um, so I wish everybody the best of luck. It's going to be a daunting task. Uh, Tyler, can you address a little bit, uh, you know, Councilman Blair, uh, Blair touched on the deliveries and traffic flow. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because really, you're not talking special events at this point, so there's no shutting down of the alley. Uh, at this point, even if you would, it would be at those times when there aren't deliveries, I would assume. But can you address some of that? Absolutely. W without 
closing it completely, it wouldn't be close to deliveries. So they would be there. And, and just as people are now using the alley, um, coming from the garage, coming from businesses, it'll be the same, but it'll be enhanced. So it'll be beautiful. There, there will be ideally more people, um, but deliveries could continue as usual and, and the uh, vehicle traffic as well. I just think that the, the city's going to have to be careful with putting more signage in the alley because the more accessible you make it to the walking public, they're going to be walking out of the garage as pedestrians do. They don't look left and right. You're going to have delivery trucks right in the middle of the alleys not paying attention to the public because they're not now. Uh, so I think we have some issues that we have to look through. I'm not saying it's a bad idea, but I, I think that as we start the process, we think that we're not done until we actually d are done. Well, and those deliveries, uh, trash trucks, those kind of things happen real early in the morning, or what time do they? Supposed to. I, I would say it varies. Um, it really does. It, it goes across the board, which is why it's so difficult to manage closing it off completely. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Councilman Good. Yeah, I have a, a number of similar concerns that uh, Councilman Blair just mentioned, and I also agree with Mayor Pro Tem or um, this should be primarily funded from the bed tax. I don't want to see any additional um, uh, challenges to the general fund for this because it's primarily um, um, tourism related. So I think it can be justified that way. Um, you know, my concern, and I had the same concern when the um, state decided to put that safe, safe route to schools project in the back of the um, second block of uh, South Montezuma, where we were assured that the uh, dumpsters would be specifically placed so there wouldn't be any uh, conflict with trucks moving in that alley, and that's turned out not to be true. Uh, we see trucks uh, going over the sidewalks, um, our own trucks for that matter, and deliveries uh, I see as potential uh, issues. We already see uh, big delivery trucks parked in the middle of Montezuma in the um, first block right there. Um, so I could see drivers saying, I don't want to potentially risk getting my delivery done and in conflict with the public, so I'm going to deliver out on Whis Whiskey Row, um, uh, Montezuma Street, which makes that even worse. So it's going to take um, a lot of cooperation, um, getting the grease cleaned up from the surface there uh, clearly has been deposited by um, merchants on Whiskey Row. So if we increase the number of uh, people walking through there, we might be increasing the liability as well. So there's a lot of people who need to do their job and do it well to make this work. Um, you know, I, I think it will certainly support upgrading the, um, the garage. And we've talked about that before. Uh, better lighting, better access, cleaner, uh, maintaining it better will support more people using it. Uh, and I think that will be um, a, certainly a benefit. So there's, um, there's quite a few benefits from this, as long as it isn't uh, challenging financially. And as long as we can get both the merchants and the uh, tourists and, and city staff to do what needs to be done to not only create it, uh, but maintain it in the long run. So those are uh, my concerns. Thank you, Mayor. Councilman Sishka. Thanks, Mayor. I agree with uh, Councilman Blair, Councilman Good, and also with uh, Councilwoman Orr. I think that this area is going to be the most interesting at night. That's when the lights are going to be on. That's when people are going to be downtown and, and, and really looking to kind of recreate in the alley. And so I don't see the trash trucks going through at night, and I don't see delivery trucks going through at night. I think that it's going to be the most dynamic and draw the most people at night. At least that's from, from my standpoint. So I think that, uh, you know, uh, it's good to make sure that we get it right, but I think that uh, we're going to have the best of both worlds. Councilwoman Scholl. 
Thanks, Mayor. Thanks, Tyler, for all your hard work and um, community members who have been involved in this process. I think this is a really important step into cleaning up the garage and making it a really useful place. Um, when we Earlier when we talked about the garage, I shared my experience of being 17 and working downtown and how scary the garage was to walk to alone at night. And so I think, um, you know, focusing on making the garage more useful and safer in the evening should be our priority. Uh, and, and kind of with that comes the benefits of cleaning up the alley. So um, I, I definitely think this is an important project that we pursue, um, acknowledging that there are some challenges in, logistically. And I think we are uh, aware of those and we'll, we'll take those into consideration as we move forward. All right, public comment. Mayor, I have five speaker cards. Okay. The first one is Sherry Shaw. You have uh, three minutes. Hi, everybody. I'm Sherry Shaw. I'm the owner of the Back Alley Wine Bar. Um, I had a bunch of points actually listed here, but you guys already spoke a lot about them. Um, one of the big things about delivery trucks, I spend all day every day in that alley. They're usually done by about 2 o'clock. Um, one of the points I wanted to make, uh, Councilman Sishka already did. I feel like this is a little bit more about um, the nighttime and making it a safer place and just a more cool, hip place. Prescott is already awesome, but there's always room for potential and enhancement. The younger generation wants hip, cool places to hang out. Um, murals and alley art are actually the biggest trend in towns and cities happening right now. If you get on the Flip This Town website, no less than probably 20 to 25, I was on last night, cities across the country right now are doing um, alley art contests in the back. They're doing art festivals. They're doing murals. Um, check out Fishbone Alley in Mississippi. It's one of the coolest ones out there. Prescott needs to remain relevant. If we're going to remain relevant, we have to know what our other cities are doing. Tourists can go anywhere. And if we don't remain relevant, they're not going to come here. So let's do this alleyway. Let's make it, it's more about the nighttime, I think. Let's get some foot traffic back there. Let's make it safer. Let's utilize the garage. I have locals come in my bar that don't even know it's there. So um, I just think that anyone who is against making your city more beautiful, I, I for the life of me, I don't understand that. So that's my two cents. <laughs> Thanks, Sherry. Thanks, Jeannie Hines. Hello there. I'm Jeannie from Hines from Arts Prescott Co-op Gallery, and we met with the group last Friday, which, you know, we voiced our uh, opinions on many things. Uh, and since you're kind of getting off of the special events, that alleviates a lot of the problems we had because we have our parking for our people in the back of the gallery there. So, you know, that's our parking spots and also next door. But one of the things that came up about the sign and having people, the high donors have pictures of themselves on that sign, that just sounds terrible, I'm sorry, personally. I mean, that should reflect Prescott, not individual. I, I can afford to have my picture on the Prescott sign with my family. So, I'm, you know, I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, also, Width of Alley came up, you know, the thought that it's such a big alley. And one of the things that I pointed out last Friday is, is that when you have big old delivery trucks and the beer trucks and things like that and you drive a larger car, Many times it is so difficult for you just to squeeze by them in the alley on the way to get to your parking. I mean, I couldn't imagine a lot of things on the side, the flower boxes and things like that. By the time you do that, it's going to be very, very tight. Uh, outside of, on Saturday morning, I worked at the co-op and outside of the new cardboard trash compactor, there was a pile of boxes broken down, not put, put inside by a, you know, and it was a bar because it was all beer boxes. So it, it wasn't a dress shop. And, <laughs> and then, um, uh, you know, I think that also, you know, for us, we have a lot of people and so do the other galleries in uh, down Whiskey Row. If they bought, buy something large 
and bulky or heavy, we always have them drive down the alley. So we can walk it right out the back door to their car for pickup. And that's very important when they're parked, you know, maybe two blocks away and there's not a, a parking spot to be found on Whiskey Row. We always say, just go in the back alley and we'll walk it right down to your car. So accessibility, you know, for our business is very, very important. And um, also, you know, if, you know, when you do get into the functions, you have to think about when there's, when you bring in alcohol, how are you going to contain that in that back alley you're going to bring in fencing to contain the people inside the alleyway number one number two of course all the extra insurance that goes along with that and number three then you're impeding the flow from the parking garage to the businesses on the other side because you have you cannot have those people wandering off and we do a lot of different art shows in the valley which have alcohol, and they have to completely fence off that art show to contain. If you the can people. wrap it up, that'd be great. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Vanessa Tamarin. Thank you for the opportunity to speak about this. I'm the vice president of Arts Prescott Gallery. I've been there 25 years. That's a working alley. I would love it cleaned up because people do need to pass through it to get to, to Whiskey Row. Um, you're talking, I can't tell you how much I have cleaned up that back alley Saturday, or Saturday mornings, Sunday mornings from the bar stuff that comes to the alley. Um, what goes on in that alley at night is not really too nice. Uh, the other thing I'm concerned about is the encroachment on the property rights of the building's owners and the parking spaces. We need those parking spaces. And I went around and talked to everyone who has one, and they're quite upset about being blocked off from their property. And, um, but clean it up, make it look nice, let us do some business. Don't impede our business, please. Thank you. Thank you. Candy Hole. It should be. Thank you, Council, for having this really important study session meeting. My name is Candy Hole, and I'm a merchant on Whiskey Row and have owned and operated for nine years. I don't have store access to and from the alley. I'm in full support of the revitalization of the Whiskey Row Alley. The beautification of the alley is something that Prescott needs and deserves. There are so many beautiful elements of Prescott. Downtown is the gem of our city. I'm from here, raised here, and now raising my own family here. As the city builds and beautifies around the alley, it would be such a sad and missed opportunity if it's left in the dust. I hope the leaders of this revitalization project will do the right thing to support the new wave of preservation, improvement, and enhancement. The historical aspect of the alley is no different than the front of the row. By creating more of a reason to bring people downtown, the better chance all the downtown merchants have to succeed. Thank you. Thank you. Josh McCraver. I'm one of the owners up at Jersey Lily Saloon. Uh, we definitely support the Whiskey Row Alley revitalization. Um, there's a lot of businesses that could benefit from it and bring more tax dollars into the community by providing them another business entrance there. I understand certain businesses have had parking spaces back there for many years, but when there's certain things when it comes to the better good of the community, I think that we can maybe do away with certain things like that. I don't have a parking space back there. I pay for one in the parking garage and seem to figure out how to get uh, refrigerators, walk-in coolers, all of our deliveries up there that are very heavy without any problems. Sometimes we do have to go out onto the row uh, sometimes we go into the garage and there's ramps out of there that can bring you right up into that alley without using steps. Um, along with that, I think that there needs to be a entertainment district uh, code, something a little different. You want to put uh, 
new storefronts back there well the code's not going to allow for additional signage for those of us that are maxed out we have the entertainment district let's actually use it and do something with the code to allow me to put a sign out there um, allow all the other businesses to actually use that space as an entryway for customers um, the space back there is tight but any big city all these other things as already mentioned they're they're figuring it out they're making it work I don't think we need to drive back there ever, in my opinion. There should be all sorts of merchants and things going on back there on a regular basis. So I'm all for it. We've definitely supported all the efforts with them doing, uh, putting all this work together, and we appreciate them doing it so we can better the community. Thank you. Thank you. That was, <clears throat> excuse me, that was the last one. Okay. Any other questions, comments from the council? All right. Tyler, thank you so much. Appreciate it. And, and everyone else who uh, pitched in to help. Appreciate it. Let's move on to item 3B, please. Update regarding the new Prescott Regional Airport Passenger Terminal Project. Well, good afternoon. I'm Robin Sabata, Airport Director, and I appreciate seeing all of you, Mayor, Council, City Manager. Um, this is an exciting time. We've just wrapped up the design. Um, we are at study session today. We had anticipated to go to voting session today, but we have not gotten the official announcement on the federal funding. We were very excited on Monday um, when the uh, U.S. Department of Transportation announced $1 billion in discretionary funds. That is the final uh, funding source before they announce supplemental. Last year they announced the supplemental pot of money on September 27th, uh, right before the end of the fiscal year. So we think we're weeks if not days away from our announcement. Um, so I wanted to give you a study session update so that you're prepared because if it is an issued in this fiscal year, the fiscal year lasts until the 30th of the month and they could try to convey that before the end of the month. So you should know what's going on and have some time to think about things. Robin, if I can. Sure. Because a lot of people don't know him. You have a new employee out there and our city manager should be standing up introducing him, who I'm very proud of and who I've had a lot of associations with. So would one of you two like to introduce him to the community? Sure, I'm actually going to do staff announcements in just a moment, if that's okay. Yeah, and I wanted to let, there's actually quite a few people here that are associated with the terminal project, so thank you for that. Um, so we are postponing our groundbreaking pending hearing the announcement. Um, the way it happens is the USDOT doesn't actually make the announcement, the legislators do. So the information goes out to our legislators first, and then they will make the announcement approximately two days to three days before the USDOT issues the notice of uh, intent to award. So that's what we're looking for. Okay. So today I'm going to be doing a, uh, a real brief PRC airport update. Then I'm going to be doing terminal staff introduction that includes members of the design staff, uh, engineering staff, airport staff, et cetera. Um, also I'm going to go through the design review and then finish with the cost summary and the eligibility. So as you know, we just finished our first year of United Express service um, operated by SkyWest Airlines. It's been incredibly successful beyond all expectations. As you can see that we are um, just, we just finished our, um, our, our 2018 year with uh, quite a few more employments than anticipated. We made the 10,000 mark. What you're seeing on this slide is what we call total passengers. Total passengers is enplanements, people getting on planes, and deplanements, people getting off. And the reason I'm showing these, this data is to show you that obviously there's a lot of potential, but this is also filling the terminal building. And as we move forward, we need to know that those passengers are pretty much wall to wall at flight time. We're looking at this year of hitting uh, more than 55,000 total passengers in 2019. Next year, we're going to probably um, surpass that by another 14,000 passengers. We are on our way to even better years in the future. As you can see, Sky West is in kind of a gray, Great Lakes is in blue, and Horizon was in green, and so we're way ahead. Now, just to give you an idea where we're at relative to the rest of the nation, there's 21,000 airports in the United States. 
of those, 3,328 are actually in what's called the NIPIUS, which is the National Plan of Integrated Airport Systems. Those are the, the airports that receive funding. About 580 airports are commercial service airport, and with just 10,000 in planements last year, we were ranked 407th busiest airport in the nation, just on the in -plainments. Based on what we expect for this year, we're going to move up to 319th, and next year we anticipate being in the top 300 busiest airports in the nation in terms of passengers. In addition, a lot of folks don't know this, but we are the 44th busiest airport in the country. This is based on aircraft traffic. So aircraft traffic, traffic is measured by takeoffs plus landings. That's total operations. So as you can see right now, we are rated 44th in the nation, and we are just below Oakland, and it's very possible we may surpass Oakland International Airport this year and become in the top, top uh, 40 airports in the nation based on increased operations by our flight schools. We are already busier than Portland, Dallas Love Field, Memphis, San Diego, Raleigh-Durham, and Houston Hobby Airport. And a lot of people don't realize that. There's a lot of very busy airports in the state of Arizona, and you can see I've highlighted in kind of a yellow there, the airports in the state of Arizona. We believe, based on our current tra trajectory, that we will probably eclipse both Mesa, Falcon Field, and Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport within the next two years because of the increase in flight training operations. The highest number of operations we've ever had in the history of this airport is around 336,000 operations. It was about a decade ago, and we could get back there again. So I'd like to introduce some really important people because in all this busyness, we didn't get here without a lot of help. So if I, ha if I could point out a few people in the audience, this would be great. Um, first of all, we have Dibble Engineering here. And that is Rep. Dwayne Dana, right here. And Dibble's worked with us on several projects. They're our on-call engineering firm, but they've worked on us literally day, every week, every day, as we've gone through this project. They've been ama amazing help. Um, Kiyomi, Kiyomi um, Kukura, I'm sorry, Karuka. Yes, she's here with DWL, and we've worked with she and Sandy extensively. And every time I call, I ask you to change something. So thank you for changing things. We really appreciate it. Michael Taylor, also local um, architect, he's helped us out a lot. He's not here today, but we wanted to acknowledge that he's been helpful in this project. Will McFan. This is a joint venture that was formed for the purpose of this terminal project. I have Jason Fan over here, who's, uh, we've also worked in lockstep extensively uh, throughout this project. And we brought in uh, Will McFan early um, as a, con a construction manager at risk um, so that they could help us through the process and sort of streamline things and help with value engineering. And did Will Mc make it? Hey, guys. Okay. So from Will McFan, I have DJ Anderson and Chris Brown. Appreciate you guys coming. Down that fourth most dangerous corridor in the United States, or I should say up it. So we have really appreciated all the help that we've gotten through this process. I'd also like to acknowledge some of the airport staff that I have in the room. Um, Christy Miller, right here. You should have applause for all the work. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. Christy's been wonderful. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. And also I have Jeff Tripp here who's returned to help us build the terminal that he had envisioned years ago. Right, Jeff? Uh, one of many people. One of many people. <laughs> And then also, I have a representative of the Friends of the Airport, Michael Getty, is back over here, Michael, and he's also on our Airport Advisory Committee, and um, they're actually helping us with the art campaign. This is just a small group of people. We've sat for hours, days, trying to work through this project, and we couldn't have done it without everybody's help, and thank you, everyone. So now I'd like to go through the design review. This started back in April or May of last year. Um, we went through schematic design, which is up to 30% design documents. We completed that by December, and that's the last time we presented in front of council on the status of the project. Then we also did design development from December all the way through February, and that's when we got our DD plans. And we obviously at that point also began to bring in expertise from the CMAR provider, construction manager at risk. Um, the council already approved the CMAR provider, obviously, and they've been very helpful in value engineering. 
Then we moved to the construction documents, the 60 to 100%. And we just completed the final construction documents in about August. And then we got our guaranteed maximum price, which the FAA requires as the indicator of the final price on the project. The FAA has received that price and they have approved it. So we are good with that particular approval that we needed from them. The CMAR that was generated, I'll be discussing in a moment. I'm sorry, the GMP, that's the guaranteed maximum price. And our, our price is good for 60 days. It actually expires on November 18th. So how did we build this terminal? How did we actually size it and design it? There's actually a, a program that was created by the ACRP, which is the Airport Cooperative Research Project. I was part of the panel that created this program to size terminals. And um, as part of this, we determined that we were estimating about 25,000 emplanements. As you recall from earlier in the presentation, I expect that we're going to be at 27,000 emplanements by the end of this year. So the current size is for a replacement terminal. I think that's real important. The FAA gave us a categorical exclusion on our environmental work that required that the terminal only be a replacement terminal. This is not for larger capacity. That's why we designed a terminal that has easy expansion, which we'll be discussing in a little bit. In the long run, they expected that our annual employments would be 50,000 passengers. I think it's very possible we may reach that in four years, just so you know. So we may be looking at an expansion in year five to be able to accommodate. The number of airlines between the two, one versus two. The number of hold rooms, one to two versus two to four. The number of ticketing position is two versus two, and that's because by the time we go to long term, we could have a common use situation where that means that the equipment can be used by different carriers at different times, but it's common use so you can log on as United today and maybe somebody else tomorrow. That really depends on whether or not we eventually get the runway extension because otherwise we do have limits in the summertime on takeoff and landing. We also planned two security screening checkpoint lanes and the total square footage as determined by the approved program is 17,924. We actually have a total square footage that we did come up with in the design process that was slightly smaller than that, and that's 17,859. I'd like to point out that when I came to you, let's see, on September 11th of last year, we were looking at a terminal size of about 16,808 square feet. We are a little bit larger than that, and the program does support it, and the FAA also reviewed that amount and supported that expansion to get it to the 17,924. I'm sorry, to the 17,859. So this is the long-term option. I just wanted to point it out to folks because um, right now the first bottom red block is the short-term expansion, and the top red block is the long-term expansion. As, as you can see, we can have four aircraft parking in the long-term expansion. Currently, we're looking at two aircraft parking in the short-term expansion. I'd like to point out in the last year that there have been many times we've had two aircraft on the ground simultaneously. I do anticipate when we have flight additions, which are anticipated in March of the coming year, and as well as all the holiday extra flights that we've got added, we could have as many as three aircraft on the ground at, at one time. Um, and so it's going to be pretty full. So we need to be thinking about that as we move into the future. So we have now redesignated the Deepwell Ranch, soon to be Airport Avenue. That's going to be the future name for that street. And that will be the main entrance to and from the airport. And right now, we also have available access off of Ruger Road and McCurdy Drive. But because of the Highway 89 changes, that will not be access southbound, only northbound as you're going on 89. So it is important to note that you know there will be continued entrance from multiple locations, but it won't be as universally available southbound as northbound. Now here's a closer in view of where the actual layout of all the work is going to be done. As you can see on the, um, the diagram up here, see if I can bring this over. You got to click on it? Okay. So this is the ramp area leading to the taxiway, and this is where the aircraft parking positions will be. This is the main terminal complex right here. So this is air side, and this is land side. This will be the roadway system that comes in off of Deep Well, and will come down here. And you can either loop around and go back, or you can go through the parking lot 
and go back. You can see that some current structures still remain, but some structures will be removed, which I'll be discussing shortly. This is going to be a new taxi lane. This taxi lane is going to allow access to what we call the B and C row hangars. These hangars have been here since roughly 1979, 1977. There is going to be an impact on existing hangars. So I have a picture here. These hangers right here are going to begin demolition on Friday, right here. A set of T-shades here and a set of hangers here, as well as the Lincoln hanger, which is right here. This is the airport administration building right here, to give you reference. So these are going to start dem demolition. They'll have 21 days to demolish those, and this project has already come to City Council for your approval. That demolition will be done on October 18th. And just to give you an idea, these hangers right here in shades were actually constructed in 1973. They are 46 years old. They would actually be eligible for historic preservation in, at year 50. So four years from now, if we did not take them down now, it's a very good chance they could be with us for a very, very long period of time because of historic preservation. Also as part of the project, it's noted that uh, Guidance Aviation granted a change in their leasehold, so they gave up this piece of land here for some additional parking here, and that also already came to council and was approved. So we've cleared the way for the entire roadway system, which we think is going to be wonderful. Um, this does not allow any more parking than was there pre and post because it's a replacement terminal. So at this point, our plan for future parking is really looking at this area down here. And there is a possibility of expanding what we call the cage, which is an area down here for some, tempor for some temporary parking that can be approved by the FAA. So there's the front rendering of the terminal building and Kiyomi, great job on that. Amazing, amazing how it's going to look. It's going to be a very impressive structure, reminiscent of the um, architecture of, or I should say architecture reminiscent of the community. So the colors are reminiscent of say the Dells and you'll see the inside is actually wonderful as well. So there's gonna be nice high ceilings and the, the wood on the ceilings and some neat tile. Um, as you look through here, you'll notice that on this rendering, whoops, sorry, on this rendering, this is actually going to be a concession area like a snack bar um, and some seating. This is a fireplace and it's a two-sided fireplace. You'll go through this door. It doesn't take being screened to go through the door and there's an entire courtyard area, which I'll show you an aerial view of a few minutes, but it'll be lovely. As you go through this door, you can sit next to the fireplace. There'll be high glass panels here so folks can watch airplanes and the airport and take off and landing. So it's really exciting. So here is the layout of the terminal building. What you just saw was an entry. So I'll just go back a minute. This, this right here, this entry point here is where you walk in right here in the vestibule. So this is what you're seeing when you walk in. On your right is the air carrier ticket, ticket counter check-in area, bathrooms. This is the airline operations area, which they've reviewed and approved. This is the seating area for the snack bar area. And then this is the outdoor courtyard, which is just gonna be wonderful where folks can sit. And then as you move through here, this is your security checkpoint line. This is the pre-check line because we're expecting eventually to be able to have pre-check. So there'll be two security lanes you'll walk through. And this is your seating area for the gate hold room. And these are the two gate positions, so gate one and gate two. This is an ADA area where there's going to be a, a place for um, the um, a, a guide dog or an assistive dog to be able to relieve themselves before the flight, which is required. And then over along this wall will be a technology wall where folks will be able to plug into their computers and be able to conduct work. And so it'll be nice to have that space. A second set of bathrooms, law enforcement office, janitor closet. And as you walk through the exit lane, so basically you've gotten off the plane here and you walk through the exit lane, bathroom here and a baggage claim area is envisioned here. Two rental car counters are here. 
You'll notice that, though, the whole area of the terminal building under roof actually allows us something that we think is very important because of our um, exponential growth. Here is actually a layout of the easy expansion areas that we have available to us with this design. Everything here is under roof. So the roof goes here, through here, comes around and goes all the way here. We have another 4,300, I'm sorry, 4,265 square feet of available space that is under roof, sprinklered, ready to be closed in in the event that we wish to expand space. So our envisionment is that we can either expand this for an extra gate hold seating area here, or all of this can be expanded as well. So we can do it in two halves here and then here in order to give us enough gate hold space that we can go up to four flights pretty easily uh, for you know, four different um, gates actually. In addition, there's areas out here where we can expand and this is actually for ticket counter expansion with the airline right here. This is back of the shop, so this is basically our TSA area um, that Jeff will be discussing briefly in a moment. Oh, I want to address one more thing. A lot of folks wonder if they can still, folks can still have access to the old terminal building. The old terminal is actually here, and you'll walk down a series of um, uh, ADA approved uh, downslope because this terminal building is actually going to start at three feet below the current grade level because the ramp is sloped up and the FAA requires no more than a 1% grade, grade um, on, this, on the ramp. So it's going to start three feet below the current uh, ramp level. So you actually come down almost five feet through this uh, series of walkways from the old terminal to the new. So Jeff, do you have a moment? Would you like to? Go ahead and talk about the baggage handling system. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor Council. Okay, well, we did a, we, we are looking to try to put a basic baggage system in for both the inbound as well as the outbound. So let's start with the outbound. As Robin said, you have your airline ticket counters here. We're envisioning having a uh, just a simple baggage belt system that will be behind the scenes. They'll check in your bags, it'll go to the belt here, and then I'll feed back into the uh, secure baggage area where the TSA will conduct their screening uh, of the luggage, and then it'll be loaded up on the aircraft uh, tug, and then taken out to the aircraft. Um, we'll talk, this section here is actually scheduled for a future expansion at additional TSA screening capacity. That will be as a bit alternate for the future. So we're looking at the basic baggage system being just, you know, this section here, the belt and roller system. Uh, for the inbound system, once the planes come back in, we're looking at just, again, a basic belt system so the uh, airline staff can offload the bags. The bags will then come through, basically through the building, come through the carousel to give ourselves as much opportunity for the inbound passengers to try to pick up the bags uh, rather than saying just a simple linear belt. This gives a little bit more room. So if, when you have 50 people plus family, friends come and help pick you up, there should be at least enough room to get your bags while you're waiting then get out of, the, out of the building. And I'm not sure if there's any particular questions I, could a, I can try to answer for council at this time. Okay, is that it? Uh, let's see. Uh, and let's see. And this is the basic fee proposal that we, we did put out to bid and receive three bids for the basic baggage handling system. We did have it in four components. Uh, the first phase was both the uh, cost for the inbound as well as the outbound, and then breaking out uh, as parts two and three for just the inbound and the outbound, and then final was just getting an idea what the, the uh, future uh, upgrade for the TSA section would be. Um, once we receive funding, we'll come back to council to try to recommend award to the lowest responsive bidder at this time. Uh, it is a company called GNS Airport Conveyor. We did receive three bids uh, based upon the uh, design. And these are the approximate cost. Now, this does include, of course, the cost to procure and install the co complete turnkey system. That includes personnel cost, training for airport staff, uh, basic supplies. So this will be a complete turnkey system with this price tag. Okay.
Okay, so now we're at the cost. And um, the basic construction cost for the building, the GMP, again, the price is held until November 18th, is $13,894,531. The construction administration is the architectural and engineering services um, required to oversee the project during the entire estimated 14-month project period. We're anticipating if we go, if we do the notice to proceed by no later than November 1st, we will be ready to occupy the terminal by Christmas of next year. So that's the plan. Um, the eligible amount is actually a determination by the FAA. If anybody's had a moment to read the AIP handbook, which is the airport improvement handbook, it's around 550 pages long, and it has very specific detailed instruction on what is eligible and what's not eligible. For example, any public area is eligible, but the janitor's closet that you need to keep your cleaning supplies in, it's non-public, so it's not eligible. Certain areas that are revenue generating are not eligible. So it's important, we went through an entire eligibility exercise and a spreadsheet, thanks again, Christy for all the work on that. Um, hours were spent, as well as Dibble Engineering helped us with that as well. And um, it was determined that $12.193 million um, is considered eligible for federal funding. The non-eligible areas um, amount to about $2.8 Eight million, so that's the air, that's the amount that, at the very least, the city would have to cover. If we add in the construction plus the baggage handling system and what we refer to as FFE, which is fixtures, furniture, and equipment, seats, relocating the TSA security equipment and recertifying it, all that, um, then the total cost is actually fifteen point, roughly fifteen point eight million. Um, the funding scenario along with that, as you can see on the right-hand side, is essentially this. In the original application that we submitted on October 31st of 2018 for supplemental funding, we put in a request for $9.33 million. The state has already allocated $1 million, and I've already submitted the letter on that one, um, for authorization to spend the money. Then in addition, the city has allocated $3.5 million. And next year, I anticipate putting in for our $1 million in entitlement, and the other million would be discretionary or additional state funding. And that is the $15.83 million, which is our goal. So we feel like we're on track for that. Um, we feel very positive about it. And we're just excited to be able to come back to you and give you the announcement very soon. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you, Robin. Questions, comments from the council? Councilman Sishka. Hello, Robin. Congratulations. Hi. This Thank is you. awesome. And the team. So good. Um, I'd like to talk about the security scanner. Okay. Um, I have a knee replacement. Oh, and okay. I'm getting tired of being legally abused. And so. Um, oh, I have good news. <laughs> Okay, would you like me to address that? Yes, would you? Okay, so uh, we did ask the uh, TSA if they would put us on the list for a um, AIT, which is an Advanced Imaging Technology. It's the scanner where you walk in like this, and it'll, uh, it'll highlight where the subject item is instead of having the whole frisk. And as you can see, when we went through the design, can I I'll flip back to it really quick? The actual spacing, can you see on the diagram? There it is. There's the AIT, yes. yes. And so we have been given um, notification that we've moved to the next level, level for the approval of that AIT. One thing all of you probably knew from previous presentations is that the TSA tried to give us this device. It's about three to $400,000. Our floor would not support it in the old TSA building, but the floor will support it here. So we feel very optimistic. In addition, we've asked for an explosive detection system over here as opposed to trace detection, which is currently being used to expedite large baggage screening. And we were not approved for that now, but they have asked me to resubmit the numbers in the spring when we get the extra flight, a permanent flight. So we, we believe that we will also potentially be eligible within the next two years for that additional piece of equipment. And there is no charge to the city for this equipment. It's TSA provided. Okay, so hopefully you. you'll have less searches in the future. We are also going to keep the magnetometer as a backup. Um, just so you know, there are some people that feel uncomfortable with the AIT. There were some privacy issues early on, which have been resolved, but some people can still opt out of screening, so there are other options. So the mag can be a backup option, or if, if one goes down, it's nice to have redundancy. 
the uh, snack bar? Yes. Is it still on the honor system? <laughs> oh. You would get so many great comments about that. And what's really amazing is some people will not have the dollars, so we'll have people send us a dollar in an envelope or they give us a check for it. Every once in a while, there'll be a 20 that pops in there because somebody's so happy with it. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, we want want people to be comfortable. But at this point, we do show some vending machines over here. So we may move from the honor system in this scenario and into vending machines. And that may be an RFP-related um, item that we may go out for along with the snack bar. Sure. What is the seating in there in that space you were just kind of pointing to when you are waiting to get on the plane? Yeah, it's currently 50. Okay. Um, but honestly, uh, there is always a possibility that we may have larger airplanes. If we get to 61 seats or more, it is very possible we will have to upgrade our security plan as well. Additional security equipment is embedded within this terminal, but because of security reasons, I can't disclose what those additional security technology measures will be okay. publicly. Other questions, comments from the council? So we're going to see a big red bow on this thing <laughs> in December of 2020. Absolutely. All right. Yeah, yeah, we're really excited about it. Yeah. Public comment? No, Mayor. Robin, when is the groundbreaking? Well, we had originally planned for it to be on October 4th, but we're going to postpone that uh, based on waiting for the announcement of the funding. And we did actually have some uh, political officials that wanted to come, but they would, could not make the October 4th. So between the two, we decided not to stretch it out any further. Let's try to set a date where we can have the public officials, like the governor, that we'd like to have come. Um, and so we're looking at within the next 30 to 40 days. Because the GMP is, expires on November 16th, and everybody's aware of that throughout the federal government. So I think we're on track. Okay. At the speed of government, Steve. <laughs> it is. At least uh, my understanding is as of Monday, it's not going to be swept for some other use. That's the good news. That is good That news. is good news. So it's just a matter of the announcement. So. All right. Well, thank you, Robin. Thank you, team, for your work on uh, this design. It looks wonderful. And we will adjourn this meeting.